in the name of Jesus. There is nothing like unconditional prayer. Every prayer is conditional. Every prayer is what is conditional. Jesus Christ in his own earthly you know, uh, ministry, his prayer life, he, oh, he was always, always, always prayed according to the will of the Father. According to the will of the Father. So, if we pray the will of the Father, God himself is bound by his word to answer us. First of all, to hear us and then to answer. If God hears. Father, this is your will. This is what you say about this particular situation. And this is what I am going through. It goes against your word. By the way, God is not honoring any man. God only honors his word. God is not honoring a man. God is honoring his word. So every man that would take God's word seriously, you will see that your life is being transformed because that word is going to transform your life. He's going to honor the word. His word. His word. Every prayer is conditional. Every prayer is conditional. Every prayer is conditional. The conditions of prayer. Many things to say. Matter of fact, there are like 13 personal prerequisites. 13 personal prerequisites. In other words, what you have to be to have in place before you even come before God to see you praying and for your prayers to be answered. There are 13 specific things that one must fulfill in order to be sure that indeed God is going to answer my prayers. Today we're going to see seven of them. The personal prerequisite. The personal prerequisite for your prayers to be answered. Number one, sincerity. Number one, sincerity. You have to be sincere with God. Praying in sincerity is one important prerequisite for prayer. Praying in sincerity. The book of Job, Job 16, 17. He said, not for any injustice in my hands. Also, my prayer is pure. Not for any injustice in my hand. Also, my prayer is pure. Psalm 145, verse 18. He said, the Lord is near unto them all. That call upon him. To all that call, up, call upon him in truth. The Lord is near. Unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. In truth. Call upon him in truth. Call upon him out of any form of deception. In truth. We have a situation here in, you know, in Matthew 6, 5. Jesus Christ brought it forth. He said, when thou prayest, when thou prayest. So prayer is not something that you should be struggling with. Prayer, we said it, is the breath of life. You have to continue doing it. Pray without ceasing. So when thou prayest, thou shall not be as the hypocrites. He said, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Valerie, I say unto you, they have their reward. You are not praying to make yourself interesting. You are not praying for people to see that, yes, you are the prayer warrior. Sincerity. You come before God with open heart. My heart is pure. My prayer is pure. There is no injustice in me. I come before God. This is one condition that is fulfilled or that must be fulfilled for one's prayer to be answered by Almighty God. Number two, reverence. 
Number two, reverence. You have to come before God in prayer in reverence. Very important. Hebrews 12 and the verse is 28. He said, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now watch what Ecclesiastes is saying here. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, he said, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the, to, to, to give the sacrifice of fools. Be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil, giving the sacrifice of fools, but they consider not that they do evil. It's an abomination to come before God and just start saying things. God, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. What about what God wants? Everything is all centered about you. That is the sacrifice of a fool. You are not hearing, you are not you know, in tune with heaven to bring forth God's purpose for your life. So verse 2 of Ecclesiastes 5, he said, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. God is in heaven, and thou you are here on earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. When one has come in touch with the heavenly mandate over his life, he will be praying that it is written. When one has in touch with the Holy Ghost, he will be praying that it is written. First Corinthians 2 9 say, I have not seen it. Say, it is written that I have not seen it. Ye have not heard it. Neither have it entered into the heart of any man. The things that God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed these things unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Every single thing deep that it is written concerning your life. It is hidden in almighty God. Anything that have eyes and ear do not have access to it. It is by the Holy Spirit. It is revealed to the Holy Spirit. This is the reason why one must be living and being testifying by the Holy Ghost that indeed you are a child of God. The Holy Ghost bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. When heaven, heaven talks, you are hearing what the word of God is in your life. And you are praying according to the leadings of the Holy Ghost. For the, it is written to come to pass. We are asking for things that are not in line with what God had called us to live. The Holy Ghost will definitely help you as you do not come to God in rashness. Rashness is a sign of non-reverence or irreverence to God. We have to come being able to listen to the channel of the Holy Spirit and pray accordingly. Number three. We said number one is sincerity. Number two, reverence. Number three, humility. Humility. The book of Psalms, Psalm 10, and the verse is 17. He said, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thy ear to hear. If we come before God in humility, Almighty God shall definitely hear us. If we come before God broken, broken in the spirit, broken in life, what they said to you is not something that is you know, touching you. You are not offended. You come in before Almighty God with a clean heart, in sincerity, 
not holding any grudge against anyone. We don't come before the Lord to attack people. We come before Almighty God for the Lord's protection to come upon our lives and upon our families. For the purpose of Almighty God to be established. I say this. We don't have any problem with anyone. For he said that we fight not. Hebrews, uh, 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 the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 12. He said we fight not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers. All these things, they are all spiritual things. We are fighting a spiritual battle. Even when the enemy is using people, have possessed them, and be using them greatly because they have made themselves available to be used, we are still not seeing them as our enemies. The enemy is Satan and his organization. This is the one that we have in mind. We are fighting a spiritual battle. So when they come around and they start fighting you physically, your battle is not a physical battle. You have to take wisdom from Almighty God. You are to redeem a soul. Not to kill people. So then, the best way is to give responsibility to Almighty God. Let God take absolute control of the situation. Be dead. Be completely dead. And be submissive unto the glory of God. Living your life. Setting your eyes on Almighty God. Continue praying. Hey, you don't know where they will be attacking you from. So with your little carnal mind, telling God what to do for you, Almighty God knows exactly what has been planned in darkness when you are completely sleeping. God knows exactly when the enemy came to your field and planted evil with the good things that you are trying to bring forth. So the same God who knows who saw them when they were planting evil, the same God knows how to deal with them. Your responsibility, focus on God. Pray unto the Lord. Let the purpose of the living God come to pass in your life. Our God is not an unrighteous God. Our God is a righteous God. God is already against the wicked. So anyone that will stand for the cause of Almighty God, you shall be defended. It is God's word. It is God's word. Set your eyes on God and let God deal with your enemies. Pray for the purpose of God to come to pass. Number four. Persistence. Persistence. This is, there is a wonderful story. I'm going to quickly read through it. Luke 11. The verses 5 to, 5 to 13. We have a situation here. That he said, and he said unto them, to his disciples. Jesus Christ is the one talking here. He said, which of you shall have a friend? This is a parable. And shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine, a friend of mine in his journey is come unto me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door now is shut, and my children are with me in the bed. I cannot rise and give thee. So basically, Jesus Christ is, you know, he's putting this parable in the form of a question. He said, Who among us might have a friend out there? And you have been visited in the middle of the night by one that have come from a journey. And you have nothing in the house. So what would you do? In this case, he said that the man just stood up. And started roaming around. And went to one of the friends. In the middle of the night. Midnight. And started knocking at the friend's door. Knocking at the friend's door. And the door <laughs> opened. The man said. <laughs> Go away. I do not have anything. My, my, my children, my family. We are sleeping by this time. It is late. Matter of fact, we have even best a, in our argument. We didn't know that you, no, we, didn't, we have nothing left. It seems like such a genuine situation. We cannot rise and give thee. Jesus said, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, Yet, 
of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. So the Lord concluded in verse 9 and said, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that access receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask any egg, will he suffer him a scorpion? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? So, now, if you look into this story here, you can see the persistency of the man that went to his friend in the middle of the night. Watch this. Number one, uh, this man that was coming from the journey never called his friend to tell him that he's coming. So he was not expected. But he still showed up. And he came at a time that every excuse is valid. It is midnight. There is no food. We might just uh, give him a little water. Say, oh, my dear, don't worry. Just show him his room. Uh, the bed is already set. And uh, please sleep. In the morning, we will get you something to eat or something. Or we might not even say anything at all. And just show him his room. And maybe he will understand. But this is not the case. The man thought of him. And said that, I have to prepare something for this man to eat. Even at midnight. I do not have anything here. But I do have friends. Let me go and knock. Let me go and knock. So he went and knocked. Oh, brother, I just got one of my friends who just came. Unfortunately, we don't have anything. Uh, he might also say, oh, my dear brother, I'm so sorry. I'm like you. We are not also having anything in this house. But the man keep going. He said, I'm sorry, but really, uh, uh, if there is anything that you can do, help me. Are you coming this time, midnight, asking for food? Where am I going to get? He said, because he's a friend. Because he's a friend. He will still go to the extent to get food for him. He said, we, we children of God, human beings, as evil as we are, when we go before the Lord and ask him something, God give us to us. As when we, our children come to us and they are asking us things, they ask us eggs, we don't give them scorpions. We are not evil to them. How much more our heavenly father, who already had good thought concerning you, it is God's will to answer your prayers. It is God's will to see you doing well. It is God's will for your family to be doing well. It is God's will. But please, don't give up. Don't give up. It's not because, uh -huh, God, I know. I have been praying this same prayer since last year. And I've been asking you about this man. Didn't you say that I have to get married? And all this prayer that I keep coming, praying the same prayer, praying the same prayer. All these men moving around. Nobody is even looking at me. God, are you not looking at my life? Can't you do something about this situ situation? I am telling you, next month, next month, if nothing has happened, God, hear me, oh, hear me because I cannot take this anymore. Next month, if nothing has happened, you are the one that is saying that we should not marry an unbeliever. That is the reason why I have been keeping myself and looking into the church. And, and these ones, they don't even care. What are you doing? If you are not answering my prayers within this short time, Lord, don't blame me for what I bring to you. Don't. Do not give such a condition to Almighty God. The persistency does not mean foolishness. Keeping going before Almighty God Almighty God does his things in his own time, not your time. Heaven has a time for the purpose 
of heaven. After all, that marriage is not for you anyway. It is for the purpose, the glory of God. And the Lord is willing to see you being married and have your family so that he will have his godly children. Thank you, my Lord. So, what we saw in verse 9 of Luke 11, that says that, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. These things are extremely important in terms of persistency. And the persistency has three levels, as I just mentioned here. The first level of persistency is the asking. You keep on asking. For this shows, you know, this shows that the petition, the, the petitioner really believe enough to receive. And this is important. The petitioner, he believes enough to receive. He keeps asking because he knows that my heavenly father is a good father. And he will not give me what is bad for me. And to empower this, we have James 1, 5 to 6. He said, if any, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask of faith. Let him ask of faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of sea driven with the wind and toast. They up and down. They up and down. We come, we ask. We don't receive anything. We go, we messed up and we are coming back again. And it keeps on. And we are not getting the real thing. So the first level of persistency is the asking. The second level is the seeking. The seeking. Keep on seeking for the purpose of, of finding the answer. Keep on seeking for the purpose of finding the answer. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm not going to give up. I will keep pressing. I will keep looking. I will keep finding. Because I know that God will definitely going to release it unto me. And I will get hold of it. Number three level of persistency. The knocking. The knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking for the purpose of getting those doors open. Keep knocking for the purpose of getting those doors open. Romans 1 verse 9 to 12. He said, for God is my witness. Apostle Paul writing to them. Whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son Jesus Christ. That without season... Without season, without season, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Without season, persistency, without season, without season, keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking. I keep praying for you, making requests. If by any means now at length, I might have prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Praying for the Lord to open the door so that he can go and visit the brethren. Hallelujah. We are coming from very, very far. We said we are going to see seven things so far. Number one, we say sincerity. Number two, we talk about reverence. Number three, humility. Number four, persistence. Persistency. Number five, submission. These are the conditions for your prayers to be answered. Prerequisites. Prerequisite conditions. Number five, you have to be submissive. Submissive to God. We must be in submission to God's will. So that we are willing to receive what, 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 whatever answer to our prayers God chooses to give us. That is another, you know, one, 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 hey God, I have been asking you, a man with a broad shoulder, why are you bringing me this ricky, ricky man? God knows that that ricky man is the best for you. The broad shoulder is going to give you blows. And you'll be coming back, you know, crying unto God. God, why did you do this? 
So right away, the gifts of God, <laughs> they are all perfect, added no sorrow. Don't come back and cry. So the Lord give you exactly what you need. Number six, obedience. Obedience. As you pray to Almighty God, you have to be obedient to God. First John. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abideth in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciple. Hallelujah. Glory be to the King of glory. The mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Abiding in Jesus. This is, these are so powerful scriptures. Amazing scriptures. This is, this is where... This is what is called your position of strength. This is where, before they get you, when you are abiding in Christ, he said that you have, to, you have to abide. You make choice of Jesus. Then Jesus will make choice of you. Now the one that is looking to kill you, to get you, they have to get Jesus Christ. This is where the power is coming from. So whatever that they have to do to move you away from your position of strength, this is why they are fighting you. If you don't have understanding, you'll be fighting a lost battle. But if you know that the one in whom you trust, this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence that we have in him. When we know that we are, we are in Christ and Christ in us, come and get me. Come and get me. Come and get me. They will be looking for you. They mention your name, the name of Jesus will answer. They will be looking for you. Testy of blood. They are looking for blood. Blood of Jesus will be presented. They will be looking for your children. They are all in Christ. For the power of the Lord is abiding in that house. There is fire around the house all the time. Satan, have you not considered Job? God, I have considered Job long time ago before you asked me. I have been roaming around. Up and down. I see his house. So why are you, not, are you not going there? Do you think I'm stupid? The place is always burning on fire. When the fire is in your house. When the fire of God is in your house. When you are in Christ. By the time you always have a, such a wonderful night. Peaceful night. Why? The angels they are on assignment. Angels are on assignment. Let the whole area be burning. With the, with the works of darkness around. But you. Thousands are falling here. Ten thousands are falling there. You are dwelling. Not even a single torch will come to you. Surrounding you, people are complaining. They are saying that there is a casting down here. There is a casting down there. There is a, and this one is not working. God says that you shall say there is what? A lifting up. Because we are not subject. We are not in the same place. You are in the world. I am in Christ. Satan is working in you. Christ is working in me through his Holy Ghost. That is why we don't pretend to the same kingdom. And the child of God must, must understand this. So we don't fight with carnal weapons. But we fight spiritual wars. With weapons that are in the God's hand. Making God the mighty weapon. In our lives. They cannot kill you. You are not to be afraid. In only one condition that you don't mess up. You understand the principles that govern this world. Abiding in Christ. Is all that these words are talking about. When you abide in Christ. 
by Jesus Christ himself. Thank you, Lord. Some of us, this has been given us so much assurance in life. We don't move around looking back and seeing who is coming to hurt us. We move forward for the purpose of God to be established over our lives. I'm not uh, thinking of you. You see me, what am I doing? I'm praising my God. My prayer is full of worship and praise. Full of glory to Almighty God. And I am dancing. God, this war. God, who wants you to take Jericho. Father, what about the war? He said, dance before me. Praise my holy name. You go around. Let your prayers be in dancing. Let you coming forth and giving that glory to the Lord. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Hey! In the name of... By the time that you are praying, every witchcraft that has taken contract over your life and flying over your direction, your, your dancing alone will crush their heads. There is power in Christ. There is power in Christ. From time to time, God will allow you to see what he is doing in, in the realm of the spirit for you. That is when you come to give a testimony. Ah, last night. Last night, something came. Something came. And uh, as I was sleeping, and suddenly I saw a man in the room. I saw a man in the room. He was rushing to, 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 to come and probably kill me. And I don't know what happened. And you are alive giving testimony here. Hallelujah. They that are gone, no, they, they don't come back to give testimonies. Nobody knows what had happened to them. There was no protection over their lives. But Jesus said, I am the vine and you are branches. You have to understand the fellowship that is going on right here. What the vine wants, that is what the branch is bringing forth. A tree of mango cannot produce coconut. So do not seek to bring forth coconut when the vine is a mango tree. Remain on your position of strength and Satan has no power over you. Remain on your position of strength and continue glorifying God in prayer. And those that are busy, do you know that every time that they come and they fail, they go back to get themselves together again. Satan is always coming to you with the greatest weapon. Every time they come, they fail. They say, don't worry, you will come again. So they will be monitoring your life. Seeking for a loophole. If they can use your children, they will get you. If they can use your husband, they will get you. If they can use your, a colleague at work, they will get you. So we are talking about character here. So all these things that we have mentioned, they are all important. You want to stand strong person before Almighty God, watch this things. Watch this things. You cannot be moving around and say that, hey, God will do it. The Lord will kill you. Ah, look at you. A Christian brother, a Christian sister that is cursing people. You want to bring forth light into their lives, not sending them to darkness. Be charged with the power. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You open your mouth, you pray for people and things are happening. But you cannot be going there dancing the same tune with them and then coming back and say that I will pray for you. Who are you going to pray to? This is the reality of our lives. We said conditions of prayer. That is what we have been talking about today. May the Lord God bless you. As you are going home, may you live by the word of the living God. The power of God will never depart from you because Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. We glorify almighty God for giving us that mighty, mighty grace. To God alone be the glory. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We bless him of the living God. The wonderful thing. The Lord God doing in the midst of the people, for church, we want to be sure that we are our but we walk what day it is in unto God. Everyone is very calm. And then God will hit the end of life.
even through which in the book Lakai chapter 2 verse 15 Lakai 2 verse 15 is the word of the Lord. God said, did not he the Lord one and wife it had he the raising of David and where all one he might see a godly seed. So basically, this scripture in place saying that only God to go whether to be one and wife. But said the reason why I brought and made them one brought them together is because I am sin for a God seed. I am seeking for godly seed. Godly seed. In marriage, it is not God for you not to have children. In the planet of marriage, it is not the Lord that be barren. Because this is the word of the Lord of why he brought people together in the net of marriage. If this is the reason marriage, they're going to have to be very careful how we deal with children the Lord giving us. And not covering our wives with blessed spirits that are not glorifying God, have been the best goal for our wives. Children are one of them. The Lord said, I'm seeking for godly seed. Who is giving this seed? It is the Lord. He said, The children are of God. Children are not of the devil. Children are what the gift of God. God gives you. He said, what I give this truth, you have a responsibility to place in this matter. You have a responsibility to bring up this strength, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Train so when you go, he will depart the place of the goal. He knocked the out of the whole tree. So when that goes, train the seeds the long way. He cannot pass through. It is the ability of the prince to black children that gave you to all that of God then is what the Lord has of our lives. So to be careful we go with things that we don't deal with. In order our service unto God to be very careful of the order of the services of life. The order our service in life, in other words, we are living our lives, we have to be sensitive to priorities and not faking. This is the order that the Lord wide of us. That number one, we shall see God as the ultimate priority of life. God. Number two, I've told the family. Number two, God 
is what is the family. Then three, the church, the ministry. Do not bring the church to ministry to a situation and be thinking you are fulfilling that which God has told you to do. Great of God, great of God, yet you are a spirit. Lord himself you can occupy any mission in this room. No one. So you can tell that the family is after God. It is life. What the told Noah in Genesis 8. Let me read two verses 15 and 16. When the Lord wanted to destroy the land, the Bible says that Noah found grace in the sight of Almighty God. And this is what God said. God spoke unto Noah, verse 15, Genesis 8, saying, Noah, go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wife with thee. That is the family of Noah. Noah you are going into the ark because you have found favor in my sight and because you train your children to know me. They are coming. They are godly, so they took godly wives. The wives are also coming. That is how the whole family was actually saved. Made it to the ark. So the Lord is expecting us, all of us, not to come by yourself as a father, not to come by yourself as a mother, but as parents, we bring everyone in the family. If the sons of Noah had children, the Lord would have asked them to go in too. Because they would have trained these kids According to the training that they received from the father Noah. And you are all coming in. It is symbolic that we cannot go without our children. And that is what the enemy wants. Moses, you can go and worship your God. Leave the children behind. We will not go until we are going with our children. If the children are not going with us, then what? The enemy knows that if he has gotten hold of the children, he had finished you. That's a fact. That is why leave the children behind. Go do whatever that you will do. He knows that you shall surely come back because of the love that we have for our children. He knows that. The Lord wants us to bring all of them in. In Genesis 25, verse 27 and 28, Genesis 25, verse 27 and 28, this is talking about a father called Isaac in his relation to his children. These boys, they grew. That was Esau and Jacob. And Esau was a Canaan hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Dwelling in tents. And Isaac the father loved Esau. Isaac the father 
he loved Esau. The reason of this love is because Esau will be bringing food. So Isaac did eat Esau's, Esau's food constantly and he delights in the food. He said because he did eat of his venison. So he's a man of hunter. A man of hunting. He goes and brings forth bush meat with soup, pepper soup. And Isaac loved it. And because of that, he had developed a special love for Esau. Please, in the case of Isaac, it was bush meat. In your case, it might be something else. But the word is telling us here that as much as Isaac loved Esau, Isaac's wife, Rebekah, she loved Jacob. So you can see right there in the house, the father has his preferred and the mother also has her preferred. In the same house, what do you think will happen? Children, they are very sensitive. If you are going to develop partiality, in the midst of your children, you might lose all of them, by the way. You might lose all of them. That is the last thing you want to do. They are so sensitive. Be careful not to bring forth any form of partiality or start showing, uh, I love this one more than you. In the case of Isaac and Rebekah, it was very clear. Very, very clear. Maybe one of your children is smarter than the rest of them. And you are considering the other ones that are not smart as failures. Be careful. Be very careful because there is a factor called time. And God is not stupid to be giving you children and making one smart and the others not. But it is because one might have probably academic excellencies. And the other, other one or others might not have. But they might have something else that you do not know. There is no child that is put here that God doesn't have a plan for that child. And if God had taken time to bring forth a plan for a child, you just have to know that it is good. Because he's a good God and everything that comes from him is all good. So don't be hasty in judging and bringing forth partiality among your children. One is not coming up as fast as the others. Or maybe one is totally standing out. But please, do not bring forth any form of division among the children. Otherwise, you know, they will grow with that in mind and your home shall be fire. Fire. The children are not in agreement. It will catch you up at the time that you don't have the strength to control it. So for Isaac, pepper soup, for you, it might be something else that you have seen in one of the child. Or you have seen in some of the children and probably one does not have anything. And you wonder if this one is of, of, from you or of you. So every time that this one, and he knows that your love to him is not like the other one or the others. And just growing down in confidence. Growing down in confidence. Mommy doesn't love me. Daddy hates me. What do you think this child will become outside? We know what outside reserved for them. 
When we are hit by outside, we run home. What about when we are running home and we know that there is fire in home? That is the reason why any useless boyfriend, any useless boy out there that will show little love to that daughter of yours, she will go. Because there is no love assuring that child that she is okay. These are some of the little, little things that once you see that your child is now mangling with useless somebody, then you start a fight. Let's deal with the foundation so that we don't find this type of problems ahead of us. We are to show our children all love that we can. Look at you standing in your home and dividing the children. If God was to look at us and be saying that you don't have this, you are not this, and the Lord is bringing forth partiality. He said, God is not partial. He regarded not man. He despised nobody. He placed all of us in the same level. Read Deuteronomy 28 from verse 12 going. You will see. He said, I am the Lord. The God of all gods. He said, the God of gods and the Lord of lords. The heaven of the heavens of heaven belong to me. Also the earth and everything that is in there. I am not a partial God. Mighty in my ways. Terrible God that I am. Watch in the way that you treat that which I have given you. This is what the Lord required of you. That you may have the fear of the Lord to train your children to fear him. And not bringing your little, little carnal mind to start judging these kids. Because Jacob saw something of his father Isaac. Look at when Jacob also grew up. In Genesis 37 verse 3 to 4, we are reading that now Israel, also called Jacob, when he grew, he loved his son Joseph. He loved his son Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved Jacob, I mean Joseph, more than all of them, they hated Joseph even more and could not speak peaceably unto him. Hallelujah. This is it. Watch what you buy for these kids. What you are giving to this one and what you are giving to that one. You might be thinking that the children are not watching. They are watching. This little boy of man, of mine, one year old, when he put on, the mother would dress him and he would come and stand in front of me and looking at me. He wants me to comment. He's looking for me to what? To give my comment. And I'll be looking at him and say, Hey, Kweku, this shoe of yours, they are not small. And look at this jacket you have. Wow. And you have to see the countenance of this boy. Full of love and smile. Daddy said that I am looking very good this morning. That will run in the mind of this little boy the whole day until another cloth shall be changed. These are children. If you are taking these things for granted, that you give this one that one, and you are giving me this one. He said that Jacob loved Joseph because he had Joseph in his old age. So he made a special coat of many colors and gave it to Joseph. So when Joseph is coming, Joseph is shining, brightening among his brethren. He has many colors. And the brothers are Said they hated him because of that quote. 
You might not understand why the children are fighting among themselves. Your mind will not even be there. They might not even tell you. But among themselves, uh -huh. we know that you have, daddy had always preferred you anyway. That is a big statement. Too. Big statement. We have to learn to stand for our children, loving them, to what extent? Let me give you a story, a true story that Jesus told, and we will stop just right here. The book of Matthew, Matthew 15, the story ran from verse 21 to 28. 21 says that Jesus Christ went thence and departed into a coast of Tyre and Sidon. So he came to the coast of Tyre, the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and in that place, behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto Jesus, saying, Jesus, have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So over here, you are seeing the love of a mother toward a daughter. What is this woman's problem? The woman's issue is that the daughter is possessed. The daughter, the enemy had gripped the daughter. And she's running after Jesus, seeking for help. Say, help me. Have mercy. Not myself, my daughter. So then, Jesus, hearing that, in verse 23, Jesus answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought Jesus, saying, Please, Master, send this woman away, for she cried after us. Watch what is happening here. Jesus Christ heard the woman saying, Help me, my daughter. The enemy has gotten hold of my daughter. But the Lord will not say a word. Not even a single word from the mouth of Jesus Christ. This is very symbolic. That number one, we have to learn to stand for our children. We have to learn to what? To stand for our children. If you are going to have the attitude of, okay, I talked to you, I told you, and you didn't listen. So now where you are, you are going to pay the price. It's not going to be well with you. This is not the attitude that God wants us to have towards our children. The Lord wants us to be able to come before him when something has gone wrong, that the enemy had come in and gotten hold of your children. You have to learn how to go and cry before Almighty God. Any parent that do not know this principle, the enemy will take away your children and will finish you. Will finish you. Because after your children, he's coming after you. As much as you think you don't care of that child's life. Let me tell you, it is not about the physical things that the child has done that you probably hate that child so much. But it is because you are bound by a covenant which is of God. He said he brought you together to, for his seek for a godly seed. The Lord has a plan concerning this child's life. So you are adonkerism physically. You will pay spiritually in the sight of almighty God. It's a fact. 
It's a fact. So we have to learn. Hey, your children will always be your children as far as you are alive. If you are going to say, hey, yeah, now they are grown up. No, God does not see grown up children. Your children is what? Your children. Your children are your children. And the Lord will see. Matter of fact, even we human beings, we see our children to be our children no matter how old they are. Eh? When something has gone wrong, nobody can talk to me the way that my mom will talk to me. She has your history. She has your history. Only one. She can bring you just only one history. One story of your life. And if you are smart, that one will humble you. Just one. So we have to learn to stand for them in their marriages when they are facing difficulties. Did you hear me what I said? In their marriages, we are standing for them, we are standing for their, for their seed seeds. Generations to come. This is the family that the Lord has given you. If Noah had thousand grand sons and daughters, the Lord would have brought all of them in in only one condition that they are trained unto his glory. All of them. He said, Noah, you found grace. You found favor in my sight. You are coming in with your seed. The woman cried, My daughter, Lord, have mercy. Devil had entered. Devil wants to possess my daughter. Devil wants, he wants to take away my son. Help me. Jesus not saying anything. Disciples coming around and be telling Jesus, Jesus, send this woman away. You know what it means? Symbolically, it is the difficulties, the opposition that you will be encountering as you are trying to call upon the name of the Lord. Even that, Jesus opened his mouth after the disciples telling him to send this woman away. He answered the woman and said, Woman, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus simply saying that you don't qualify for me to help you. This is when everything is standing in your face that your child is not worthy for you to redeem her, him or her. This is the situation that circumstances are going to work against you. Trying to. Let me give you a clear example. Let's say your child is at school and this son of yours is not doing very well. So as much as you are trying, probably giving, you know, uh, private uh, tuition and, and studies and everything else, and uh, this boy is still not making it. Don't let that boy go. Amen. Don't. Amen. Don't. The teachers might be discouraging you. Say, so, oh, this one. The attitude of the boy or the girl herself will even discourage you. Your child cannot make it to this school. He's not smart enough. But the woman is saying that I know that he's not smart. But it is not a child that I purpose to have my, myself. He or she was given to me by God. And God has a plan for this child. So I will still call upon the name of the Lord for this child's life. To see that which the Lord has given this child. This is the opposition we are talking about. You know what this, you know, the, the woman addressed to Jesus. Yet the disciples, they came 
and told Jesus, send this woman away. You know why? Because the woman was persistent. Have mercy. Send her away because she cried after us. As much as opposition shall come in the life of these children, parents must learn to stand and save the life of their children. How can you be here in this life? Your children are messed up out there and you sit down eating. Said, I, 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 I am joyful. America is good. Seriously? What is it that is good? The food or your sorrow that you are covering? You have to be sensitive. You came to this land of America and your children are now astray. The enemy has gotten hold of them. And you are still talking about what, what, what is it that is good? You have, you are failing in the sight of Almighty God and the Lord is going to ask you. This is going to be part of your judgment. What did you do with the children that I gave you? Do you know that some, some are crying before the Lord to have children? To have children. Even just one. But look at you. Every time you turn around, a baby is born. And you are standing there saying, my family, we are fertile. You better watch you and take care of these kids. Somebody is crying just to have one. If this one is not listening, it's okay. I have four more. So he can be in prison I will be okay. How can you be okay? You can't. No matter what, this woman must stand and continue. Even Jesus telling her, you are not entitled to receive help for these kids. Yet, in verse 25 and 26 of Matthew 15. This is what the woman did when she heard that she's not entitled to receive help from Christ. He said, then came the woman and worshipped Jesus saying, Lord, help me. But Jesus answered and said, woman, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Seriously? It is not meat to take children's bread and cast it to dogs. So basically, the Lord is simply saying that healing is children's bread. That is one. Number two, this woman, Jesus said, if I give you this food, this bread, it's like giving to a dog. That is the Jesus that we serve, on, talking that way. So is the Lord insulting this woman? No, the Lord is not insulting this woman. This story here, it is there as a principle for us to learn. The Lord is, remember where this woman is coming from. The woman said, devil has taken over my child. The devil has taken over my child. Then when the woman heard the story of dogs, then she said to Jesus, Jesus, you are right. He said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. <laughs> this is something else. This one, it is to tell you that if you are going to be proud and protecting your honor in the society, your children will perish. 
you will lose that which is precious from this marriage that you went through or from this marriage that you are in. The Lord is requiring you of bringing these kids unto him. So I am ready to do anything. Basically, that's what the woman was saying. Call me dog. Let that which falls for the dogs come to me as a dog. And I'll be okay. You name it. We are to go to any extent to save our children. And you have to see where the principle is really going. It's all toward God. Don't cease to pray over this child's life, this children's life. Going before the Lord and waging war. Your child marriage is not going well. Your children are not doing well. From one problem to another. You have to stand and call upon the name of the living God. For the enemy is trying to get you. He's trying to get you. Passing through the children. Oh, that is his life. It is not his life. It is your life. Your life. Call me dog. Call me anything that you want to call me. I cannot let my child go. Period. We can't leave our children behind. Pharaoh said, go. Take everything you want to take. Leave the children behind. He said, we can't. We can't. We have to go with our children, not only with our children, but also with everything that we have been able to gain here on this land. We are going with everything. We are going with everything. Look at them. They don't, some they don't even speak our language. Some of these kids that we have them here, they, don't, they speak English. But yet, see what the devil is trying to do. See what the devil is what trying to do. They said, you came here illegally. One must be sensitive, you know, to the things that are precious in the sight of almighty God. And now that you are 18, if you are going to do this, they say, go, go, go out. Out of my house. Listen to you. You are sending yourself away. You are sending yourself away. The woman came and worshipped Jesus. Let me be a dog and save my child. In verse 28 of Matthew 15, he said, Then Jesus, hearing everything that this woman said, Jesus said unto her, O oh woman, great is thy faith. Great is what? Thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The moment that Jesus released it, the daughter was made whole. Oh woman, thou hast great faith. You see, most of the time you come around, Oh Lord, this year, increase my faith. Increase my faith. I am giving you the solution of one thing that will never fail in your life. To receive the great faith from God. That is to learn standing for your children. Endure the hardship of the situations that they might bring on your way. But remember, the enemy is behind it. So if you, don't, you are not paying attention... 
You will only see your children messing up your life. You are not seeing the devil. See the devil and get hold of your children. See the devil and get hold of the children. They are looking for them. They are looking for them. You watch on social media. They are looking for your children. They are looking to train them for you. So if you are not sensitive enough and you are going to be shouting and fighting in the house and that's it. You are now 18. Go. I wish God would tell you to go when you were 18. But yet, we messed up many, 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 many ways. He keeps showing as that great love. Anyone that is not sensitive to this kingdom principle, you are only, not only going to lose your children, but you will lose your life. You will lose your life. It is, it's a package. When the Lord wanted to save Noah, said you are coming in with your children. Fight over their lives. When is this going to stop? It will stop only when you die. It will stop only when you die. I heard a story yesterday and I was marveled. Somebody said, he knows a woman who was smoker, heavy smoker. She will be smoking, smoking, smoking. And has a little, a little boy, a little son. And one day, as the woman was smoking, 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 the son looked at the mama and told her, Mommy, you know this commercial that I'm seeing at the TV? About this smoke, look at me. All this time you have been taking care of me. When I grow, I am also going to take care of you. But what about if you are killed by this smoke? Can I take care of you? The woman simply quit smoking. She what? She quit smoking. If you train these kids God's way, the responsibility is also placed upon them to love you. To love you. Just dump your parents in the nursing home and you have been torn in my flesh. Go and see back home in the village. Where we come from, we don't dump the parents. So. We don't dump them. It's even, it's, mama is still alive. Grandma is still alive. And the little ones, they enjoy. <laughs> That's what life is all about. So watch. It is two-edged sword. That is the word of God. You don't care about them. Most likely, you might end up in nursing home. With children not coming around. So our love to our kids, it has to be without any form of condition, unconditional love. It's part of the covenant. It's part of the covenant of marriage. The woman was selfless. Call me dog. Call me anything. Let me go through the hardship of the land of America. But I have to make sure that my children shall stand. Then what is the purpose of this trip journey that I made to this land? What type of life do you want me to present out there? 
the country where I come from, they don't ask you of how many houses you have. If you are prosperous, they are looking to see your children. God is looking for the same thing. The same thing. So everyone and each one of us must understand we are here in this land where so much is going on. Be sensitive to what the enemy is doing and not hand over that which is precious in the sight of Almighty God to the devil. You lose them, you have lost everything. 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 This is it. May the Lord help us. May the Lord be mighty with us. Strengthen our hearts to fulfill that which he had called us to do. God bless you. God bless you. And we thank God for everyone and each one of you. We have a message from the living God that we titled The Three Things About Faith. The Three Things About Faith. Hebrews 11 and the verse is 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We are here living and the whole purpose of our lives is to make sure that we are pleased in the sight of God so that God can receive us. He said, in order for our lives to please God, we must believe in God. We must know that God is God. And there is a reward as we seek him and as we come to know him. Romans 1 and the verses 16 to 17. He said, For therein, which is the gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The children of God justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, they shall live by faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. When you couple these three scriptures, it is faith, it is essential to save God. Faith, it is essential to live and please God. Faith, it is essential to be moving up, stepping up in whatever area of your life. Last week we talked about how we need to live a life that is taking us from faith to faith. Through the preaching of the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed through the preaching of the gospel and it is meant to take you from one level of faith to another level. Coming up higher and higher. Being increased in faith. Coming closer and closer to God because the word is meant to draw you closer to almighty God. 
So closer you get to know Jesus, higher your faith stands. So we said that we are going to see three things about faith. Number one, we said faith is confidence in God. Faith, it is confidence in God. We're going to use the example of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15 and the verse is 5 and 6. He said, for 90 years, Abraham was already 90 years old. And this man did not even have a single child. The wife, 10 years less, 80 years old. So, when you look at the physical aspect of things, human body is not capable to bring forth at that age. But because this man is called and he has been working with Almighty God, putting his faith in him, a time came that the Lord brought Abraham. So, Genesis 15. 5 to 6, he said, God brought Abraham forth abroad and said, Abraham, look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And Abraham said unto God, So shall thy seed be. That is what God told Abraham. Look unto these stars. And see if you can number them. Abraham, I know you don't have any child at this point. But this is my word to you. As you see the stars, so shall thy seed be. Abraham heard it and he believed in the Lord. And God counted it to him for righteousness. God counted it to him. For righteousness. 90 years old. 80 years woman on my side. When there was strength to conceive. Nothing happened. And he was still walking with this God. But at this point. When everything has been given up. The body testifies that it is not possible. But the Lord spoke a word in this man's life. And he believed. He believed. He believed. Why did he believe? Romans 4 and the verses 20 and 21. He said, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. This is so wonderful. Abraham, walking with God, the Lord spoke a word, made a promise unto him. Abraham did not look unto his physical body, neither Sarah's womb. But Abraham looked unto God. He looked unto the word that proceeded out of the mouth of the living God. And he came to find out that indeed man shall not live by bread alone. But shall live by every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. God has spoken. This God is able to bring forth what he said he is going to do. He didn't look unto the situations. But he was persuaded that God who had made the promise is able to perform that promise. He was persuaded that God who had made the promise was able to fulfill that promise. Which way? Because of the power. Because of who God is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of they that diligently seeking him. They that diligently seeking him in faith. 
They that diligently seeking him, walking with this God in faith. Walking with this God, not in unbelief, but walking with this God, believing that the word of the living God cannot and will not fail in your life. This is what the word of God. Abraham could not see anything of what is going on around him. He could only hear the word of God and know the power, trust in the power, trust in the ability, trust in his potential. Because, and he's right. God speaks. God is not a man. He told us, he said, I am not a man to lie. He doesn't lie. He does not see the way that man sees. He does not. He sees the spirit, the heart of a man. That is what almighty God sees. So man cannot see the way that God sees. Therefore, it would take the spirit of God in a man to come up higher to believe in this spirit, which is the Holy Ghost that has spoken into his life and know that indeed, I have to know that is God that have spoken and not the word of a man. When a man is making a journey with the Lord, you are meant not to be looking onto what people are going to say. You are not even meant to be looking onto the situation itself. But be looking onto the one who made that promise that he is going to take you there. Because if he said it, he said it in his possibilities. If he said it, he said it in his power. God speaks in his potentials. God, almighty God, will not say something that he cannot do. Because he is the I am that I am. When he says it, it is established. Matter of fact, because you are existing, the Lord God only revealed to you what he had already planted in your life. So the word of God that comes to you is a word that is already established. It is only belonging to the man that is walking with God to know that I am not walking with man, but I am walking with God. And if I am walking with God, whatever that the Lord has spoken to my ears, to my heart, it shall surely come to pass. So in Hebrews 6 and the verses 4, 15, he said, so after Abraham, Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So you can see that it's not just believing, it's not just faith. Faith has to be coupled with endurance. Faith has to be coupled with patience. And then you will definitely see the promise of the Lord being established in your life. Very important. Endurance. It means that something is going to shake the word that God has given you. Endurance. It means that something is going to come as a tribulation in the environment. But you still have to see God. Patiently. In meaning that you're going to be seeing others running faster than you. You still have to wait upon the living God. Endurance and patience. You will be tormented. You will be afflicted. You will be going through tough times. Jesus Christ in John 16.33, he said, In me, you will have peace. But in the world, ye shall have tribulation. Tribulations are part of the promises of Almighty God to bring forth that, that the Lord is going to do in your life. Jesus said it, that in the world you will have tribulation. It's a word of God. It's a word of God. But the Lord said that if I have spoken it, it shall surely come to pass. If I have spoken it, it shall surely come to pass. So the only one that can, you know, stop the word of the living God being performed in your life is yourself. It is yourself. What you don't want, God will not do it for you. What you don't want, God will not do it for you. But if God has spoken that word in your life, and it has come to be settled as the word of God, not the word of man. The word of man, anything can blow it out. But if it's the word of God, God watches over his word to see it being performed. He watches over his word. 
He watches over his word. He watches you know, in power, in grace, no matter what they will do, as far as you continue looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of that faith. You see that? That Hebrews 12, 2 that we read. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So the author of the word of promise and the finisher to bring to, per, to, to bring to be established and to bring to be performance. The word of promise. That is him. Uh, there is a scripture. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 24. He said that faithful is he who called you. He also will do it. Faithful is he who called you. So the one who made you to make the step. He is the one that is also going to take you through all this. Abraham endured the situation. The Lord's promise has come. You're going to face persecutions. You're going to face trials. You're going to go through tough times. But it is your faith has to be coupled with endurance and patience and setting your eyes. Not, you know, disturbance and distraction are not allowed when you want to see the plan and the purpose and the promise of God to come to be established in your life. The enemy will fight you from every corner and anything is allowed to be used. Jesus, we said it, that he said in this world, you will have tribulation. But the tribulation is not going to overshadow your life. Tribulations are not going to overcome you in only one condition that you stay in Christ. In me, you will have peace. Storm will be going around you, all around. 10,000 is falling here. 1,000 is falling there. But thy dwelling, which is in Christ, is not being shaken. When people are saying that it is tough, things not, there is a casting down, you shall say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. Why? Because we are not dwelling in the same place. We are not dwelling in the same place. So it will come what is killing others. When it comes to you, it is only going to strengthen you. What is not people, no, what I, 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 I'm, I'm making people giving up. When it comes to you, because of faith, endurance and patience and patience you will definitely see it to come to pass thank you lord so in second corinthians chapter 1 and the verse is 20 the word of god says he said all the promises of god in christ jesus are yea Yea, meaning yes. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are all yes. They are all yes. And in him, amen. Amen, meaning it will be so. It will be so. So, <laughs> this, unto the glory of God by us. I love that one. Unto the glory of God by us. The promise that God made to you. That he will bring you to that expected end. The Lord wants to see you at that expected end for him to take glory. I have already been saying that God delights seeing his children being prospered. God delights seeing his children doing well. God is not a wicked God to see you going through you know, situations that are crushing you and standing there and taking joy. No, the Lord said that. Yes, situations that could crush you will come on your way. But I, the Lord, I am with you. When you are going through waters, I will be with you. When you are going through fire, I will be with you. I, the Lord, I will take you out of the hand of the enemy and you will step over near next. And what I said I'm going to do with you, you shall surely live in only one condition, believe it in me and see it coming to pass. Unless you don't want it. But God delights to see us fulfilling what he wants for us and to take his glory. And to take his glory. So the word of the living God, all the promises in Jesus, they are yea and amen. It is yes which is already signed by heaven. Heaven is giving you that check. But a check that is given by heaven. If through faith you have to turn that check, 
the back of the check and sign it and say amen it shall surely come to pass so shall it be that is faith heaven will never reject any check that is signed by jesus christ and your situation can never be the same it is impossible why god is he said he he is the word and the word it is settled nobody shakes god said i am that i am what is your name i am tell them that my name is i am that i am go and define it go and tell try and trace the 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 the, 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 the family tree i am that i am so you can see that it is not our responsibility to be looking for faith, you know, uh, inside us. We have to look for faith in the promise of God. Some people are talking said that, oh, if only I can have, if only I can have, I can have faith. I can have faith in trusting that the Lord is going to give me this. No, you have to have that faith in the word, the promise. Is God, had God made a promise concerning that situation that this is what he's going to do for you? I have faith that this year is a year of my breakthrough. I have faith that this year is a year of my abundance. I have faith that this year I'm going to be a millionaire. It's, it is, is this a word from the living God? It is a rumor that the Lord has spoken to you that this is what I am bringing to pass in your life. And standing on it and said, oh, I have faith. No, you have to have that faith according to the rima word. According to what the Lord God had given you. The word that is written. If it's a promise from the Bible and you are standing on there. Faithful is the Lord that spoke his word. And he shall surely bring it to pass as you trust him and believe him. And you are going, you will know, you will know. If it is really from a word, a word from the living God. You want to see that the word is going to be attacked. The word is going to face persecution. The word is going to face trials. That is how you will know that indeed your God has spoken. Indeed, your God has spoken. Because the word will prove itself. Every single time that they will come against that word of God in your life, the Lord will stand for his word. And you will be seeing that you are facing situations, but one way or another, you are still moving. They want to crush you, but you, they cannot, and you are still moving. They are wondering how you are moving with all that they are doing, but one way or another, the Lord is moving you. If it is a word from God, heaven will overshadow your environment. Heaven will empower you. Heaven will protect you. Heaven will secure your environment. Heaven will keep you going. The enemy might be rejoicing every time that there is a hate in your life. But let me tell you, that hate is not meant to stop you. Because you have become an unstoppable man. Because a man that has received the word of the living God is not the same man anymore. That man is walking with God. That man, his eyes is open onto something that is not physical. He can see what you cannot see. So what you are doing physically to stop him is not something that is going to work. Because it is the spiritual aspect that triggers the physical. This is the word of the living God. The word of the living God. So, in Hebrews 6, and the verse is 12. We are advised to have the same attitude as Abraham. The word says that, Ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Followers of them through faith and patience they inherit the promises. So now we have come to at least see one aspect of these three things that we are going to see. We said that faith number one is confidence in God. Confidence in God. 
he is faithful who had given his word. He promised he would definitely bring it to pass. We have said it all in this. The endurance, there is time notion in there. Patience. Time notion also in there. So when is it coming to pass? It is not your time. It is the time of the promise. It is the time of the promise. So number two, we said faith is dependence upon God. One, faith is confidence in God. Two, faith is dependence upon God. We're going to see the reason why God drove Adam and Eve away from the garden. Genesis chapter 3 and the verses 5. He said, God, Satan is the one that came to them, to Adam and Eve, and spoke to Eve. He said, God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that Satan will come to you and tell you, if only you can come to find out, you can come to knowledge, then you will be like God. You will be able to establish, to bring to pass. Uh, if you just let go, you might not catch it. But here, why is it that the moment that they heard, Adam and Eve heard, that they are going to be like God, then they were caught into the devil's trick and they sinned against their God. Simply because they just want to be totally independent from God. You want to be like God. Then you don't depend on God anymore. You yourself is God. You yourself is God. So, this is something that is extremely important. The moment that man is coming to, you know, to accept, to know, you know, good and evil, it is something that man is just trying to isolate himself and say that, you know what? I know this. I can do it by myself. I can make it happen. I know what to do. I know the right thing to do. I know the way to take. That is independency from God. But if you will have faith and you are depending on God, you depend on his leading, the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Your knowledge does not count because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. You're, you do not have enough insight to be by yourself, but this is what most people are also, you know, they are caught into this. The devil's same trick that is bringing people to fall. He wants you to know that you are sufficient. That you don't need God. You do need God. The Lord made that promise. Maybe you have a lot of qualification and you said that, oh yes, I know I can make it. And So you are totally going to depend on your personal intellect. It is not going to work. So if you depend on yourself, you will surely die. But if you depend on God, you shall live. If you depend on yourself, you will die as Adam and Eve died. But if you depend on God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, life shall come to you and you shall surely live. Jesus Christ in John 15 and the verses 5, he said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, ye can do nothing. It is important for a child of God to recognize his position of strength. It is important for a child of God 
to recognize his position of resource. It is important so that you don't move out of your position of strength for the enemy to get you. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You are not even by yourself. You come to be part of this body. You are just a branch that must also supply. But a branch that is receiving its nourishment from the vine. So Christ will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. He will supply when you need security. He will supply the needs according to the word that has been given. The promise of God. So once we come to understand that we cannot do it by ourselves. But with God all things are possible. Everything that God has said that you will become. You will definitely become no matter how much the enemy will try to oppose your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Without me, you can do nothing. A branch, indeed, we said it. So, faith is total dependency on God. If you choose the good because you think that that is the right thing for you, you will definitely miss the best or even the excellent from God. Sometimes we really, we look onto the situation and we see that, oh, okay, this one, no problem, I can handle it. There is a problem, you cannot handle it. The enemy is showing you something that looks like you can handle it. It will take God's power to overcome that situation. So, you can obtain something that is good, but it is not what the Lord has for you. The Lord has something that is best, something that is excellent. So, as you depend on him, endure patiently and wait to see what the Lord God had in store for your life. Uh, there is another thing here. As you depend on God, the book of Habakkuk, because there is a hindrance to faith, which is pride. A hindrance to faith, which is pride. So, Habakkuk, chapter 2 and the verse is 4. He said, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in God. A soul that is lifted up is not upright in God because we said it, that the just shall live by faith. So this scripture here, the just shall live by faith, is quoted at least in three different... We saw it. There is one in, in Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, Hebrews 10, 38. It's talking about the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If you live by sight, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. But if you are one that has been justified by God, definitely you must be living by faith. And through faith, the promises of God, through faith, that project will come to be established. Through faith, the Lord will do it. Through faith, the persecutions and the trials and everything that they will try to just keep you on the same spot. It's just, you know, you are there. It seems like you are at the same spot. You know what? It's your time of endurance. It is your time of patience. But when it is God's time for you to move, nothing that keeps you on the bandage Nothing that has been holding you for all this while can ever keep you at that same spot. Your responsibility. Be humble to the word that has come to you. Uh, proud people, people that are so proud, they don't have faith. The proud, they don't have faith. Said the soul that is lifted. It's not upright in the sight of God. Because they think they can do it by themselves. Yeah. So, the pride do not have faith because they cannot humble themselves for the Lord to walk with them. And God resists the proud. Automatically, there is no way that the word of the living God can be performed in your life because you are not in line with the word. You are above the word. If I can be God myself, what do I need God for? These are the proud ones. You know, when you look at, uh, you compare people like the Roman centurion, 
This is in Matthew 8, 5. This Roman centurion came and uh, <laughs> coming in, believing that Jesus can heal the servant that is sick. Jesus said, let me come with you. He said, no, 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 no. no. Your word alone is enough. Your word alone is enough. Please release the word and I know that it shall be accomplished. That is faith. He had faith in the word of Christ. Meanwhile, the other side you have the Pharisees. Because of much pride. Because of their knowledge of Bible. They even become the enemies of Christ. They were fighting every single thing that Christ would say. They see themselves as so righteous and knowing so much God. And taking glory of God upon themselves. But the one who has been coming to God and knowing that God is God. Is the one that sets everything that he does. Into the power. In the goodness. He, depend, he has confidence in God. He depends on God. That the Lord God who has spoken. Is definitely going to do it. So that hindrance. Of pride. It's something that we have to take it out. Many are missing the assignment of God. Because of pride. Pride cannot allow you to wait. I am now ready. God will tell you when you are ready. When you have gone through this. Ah, these situations of trials and all that. How can I? Me, myself. How can I be waiting not that long? And how can I be going through this, 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 this things? Have you not seen me? How can I be taking this situation? If you cannot come down, I mean, when the Lord had made a promise to take you there, you will come, <clears throat> sorry, you will come to God, the Lord will break you. The Lord will take you through school. You have to graduate by taking every single class. Every single class in, this, in the school of God. Before you come out. So if you are not humbled. If you are not someone who is you know, living his life with the spirit of humility. You will not get there. Man can make you what you desire. But whatsoever that man make it, it is not established as God will do it. Because man is made. But God, who is the creator of it all, when he had done it, it is established. He said, whatsoever that the Lord doeth, it is good. It is good. So, the humility aspect of it is essential. Your achievement cannot bring you to a, a, a level that God cannot use you anymore. He takes you from one degree of glory to another. One degree of faith to another. So, if you are proud, huh, I used to have a, a PhD in my country. How can I be coming to America and be driving taxi? How can I be coming to America and be driving taxi? So that your wife is just working herself out. She's going out of strength. When you cross your leg, sitting down at home, when she's at work so much, and you cross your leg, you come down to just dressing and moving around with your PhD that is not helping nobody. The Lord wants to use you. You are in a new place now. You are in America. Your PhD, maybe God wants to take you higher. You receive a PhD from your country. Now you are going to receive a PhD from the PhD countries. A higher level that the Lord wants to take you. But you are not ready to humble yourself. Nobody comes to America here. If you are a medical doctor in your country, you come here, you have to go through their courses and pass the board. But if they, they, they are starting you, they say, we want to see your level of English. They say, ah, how can they give me the ESL type of English? These people are insulting me. Hey, please, don't be chatting. Just go. Go, accept the fact. Go through it and pass it. Then you are ready for the next step. 
But if you are sitting down there and said, oh, taxi is not my thing. How can I come with, in America and start with a taxi? The people that are driving the taxi, you are not higher than them. It is just in your mind. Somebody is greater than you and he's still using that means because why? The Lord is taking him through his school. The next thing you know, as you have been sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting, yeah, yes, you are, you are, you are, you, you are glued to the chair. Your life is not moving forth. Complaining and complaining. You are going to kill somebody's daughter. Thank you, Lord. Pride. Let's talk about the last one. Which is faith brings obedience to God. Number one, faith is confidence in God. Faith is dependence upon God. And faith brings obedience to God. Romans 1 and the verse is 5. He said, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. For what purpose? For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. You see that? We have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. For obedience to the faith. So, you see, the, point, the people of the Old Testament... All that they knew, it was obedience of fear, lest God punish them. Obedience, if I don't obey this word of God, the Lord is going to punish me. That was the people of Old Testament. So a lot of hypocrisy. It's like they were, they, they, you know, they, they are not willing to do it, but because of the punishment, let me go ahead and do it. So they were doing these things for rewards. For rewards. If I do this, the Lord will bless me. If I don't do this, I am going to receive curses. Then since I want to be rewarded, I better do this one. That was obedience in fear. In fear. They were not doing things from within. It's not something that, this is something that I really, I really want to do. To please my God. I have faith. You know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want to do this to please my God. This is something that is being proceeded from within. Not because of the blessings. If I do this, God will bless me. So then let me do this. Don't, then, 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 then let me do this. No. But in the case of children of God, it is something that is from within. We do everything God tells us to do because we know that whatever that the Lord tells us to do, it is for our good. That is a different mindset. It is not because of the reward. But I do know that the word of God is meant for my good. I come to God in faith because I know that God is God. And knowing God as my father, not the policeman as the people of the Old Testament knew him. But my father, who is, you know, had planned it all onto my good. So whatever that I do, or whatever that he tells me to do, that I do. I am not doing this in the fear of what he's going to do to me if I don't do it. But I am doing this, you know... In the reverential fear, the fear that a child should have for his father. In the sense that whatsoever that daddy tells me to do, it is going to turn to my own good. Even if it might seem like something that is not, you know, uh, uh, obvious. You might see it as something that is, that is just, why the Lord will ask me to do such a thing? It doesn't seem like there is a benefit coming to me in this thing. Believe me. God who spoke it. He knows what he is doing. What he puts you in there. It is 
for you to be doing it and the Lord is shutting the mouth of your enemies. When they will see you going through that situation, they said, hey, we have finished him. They don't know that these are the stepping stones for you to come up higher. A group of people decided that this time we are going to kill this donkey that has been causing us a lot of problems. And they dig a hole. And they put the donkey in there. And they started shoveling dust to cover, bury the donkey. And every time that they would throw the dust, the soil into the donkey in the pit, the donkey would shake itself and step up. And they continue. More, he will be shaken and step up. More, he will be shaken and step up. So as they continue feeling, thinking that they are burying the donkey, the next thing they knew is that the donkey was already up and said, hey, bye-bye. So whatever that the enemy is doing, by the time that they were throwing the dirt on you and all that, God said, no, don't worry, just shake yourself. My son, don't worry. Just shake yourself. Take it easy. Don't pay attention to them. Don't play their gossip. Don't do this. Don't, uh, my, 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 follow, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I cannot put you to shame. And the Lord is strengthening you. And you keep coming. And we are preaching the word. Say, so God will protect you. The resources of the Lord, they are here and amen. Promises of God, they are here and amen. God who spoke to you, it shall surely come to pass. We continue giving you that word of encouragement. No matter how long it takes. You shall surely come out unto the fulfillment of the living God's word in the name of Jesus Christ. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Whatever that God tells me to do, it is for my good. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and the verses 10 and 11. Sometimes the enemy just wants us to be remaining in the pit. By throwing so much dust on us. And we are caught into their craftiness. So he said, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Hallelujah. Now you watch this scripture. What the enemy wants you to do is that when some, someone has done something to you, that you keep it in your heart. What you have done to me, I will never forget it. And I will never forgive you. You know what it means? Satan wants, he wants you to stand at the same spot. Because according to this word, he said, if you forgive someone, I the Lord also forgive you. You forget So, if you are holding something against somebody who is on the bandage, you. If someone has done something wrong to you and you free the person, you see, who is moving forth? You. So God said it. He said, as you do it unto them, remember, it is something that is bouncing to your own account. Release them. They came to Jesus. They said, Jesus, this woman has committed fornication. According to the law of Moses, this woman, she must be stoned. What do you say? The Lord started writing on the ground. Say, Jesus, how are you? why are you writing on the ground? There is already a written word from Moses. They want to trap Jesus. Jesus lifted up his eyes. He said, <laughs> If anyone is here who had never sinned, please let that person be the first person to cast the stone to this woman. Kill her. And right there in their surrounding, they started dropping the stones. They, hey, we as children of God, we are not to have stones in our pockets against nobody. We are not. All of them were having stones in their pockets ready to kill this woman. There was only one man who did not have any stone. As everybody dropped the stone and left. They have to go. You know why? Because they knew who Jesus was. This is the coming. He said, you know, it was the coming of the prophetic ministry of Jesus. What you have done in your chamber, Christ knows it. 
So if you were there, you dare to stand forth and say that, you know what, I'm clean. I'm going to stone you and finish you. Jesus said, oh, hold on, since you said you were clean. Let me tell you, you know, yesterday, do you remember Road Pondell? Uh huh. By the apartment 507. You remember, sister, so so and so. Uh huh. What you were doing? He said, but that ma- that girl, she's the brother. Uh huh. Brother, bro- 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 brother. Uh, uh, oh, you are here. You are here. Uh, that that is your wife. Uh huh. This man. He will tell your secret. So they dropped the stones. And they left. Jesus has no condemnation upon nobody. Jesus doesn't condemn you. The heart that is, has come into repentance, no matter what you have done, if you only decide that this time, I'm just going to look unto Jesus Christ, the Lord who has no stone against my life, the Lord who will not you know, bring any form of shame, God who had a promise, whatever that the enemy has done to my life, it doesn't matter anymore because now the word of the living God, the word of promise has come to me. Salvation has come to my door. I am going to open this Jesus and I'm accepting him as my Lord and my Savior. And whatsoever that the Lord has spoken over my life, whatever that the enemy has done, it is over now. I am now heading to the direction of Christ. It shall surely come to pass. It shall surely come to pass. It is for our good. But the enemy wants you to keep on holding grudges against your husband. I will never forgive him. I will ne- that is why you are miserable. I will never. What you have done to me, I will never forgive you. I will never. No, 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 no. It is, it is a weapon of the enemy. There is a message that I preached. It's still on the web. He says, unforgiveness is a satanic weapon. Because you come to find out that what they have done, Satan is the one that probably used this one or empowered that person to even come and do whatever that they did to you. Just because he tried so many times to get you and he couldn't. So he passed by your mother. He passed by your father. He passed by a sibling. He passed through you know, a relation. To what? To snare your life. Because how can a brother do this to me? Even somebody from outside cannot do such a thing to me. So how can a brother? And he said, I am not going to forgive him forever. Your life is going to be snailed forever. That is what Satan wants. Free him. Release him. May the Lord give somebody grace to release anyone that you have in captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Second Peter 3. And the verse is 8. He said, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Hallelujah. And a thousand years as one day. Don't be covetous. Don't think that it is too late for you. Don't see what they have been doing and he said, oh yeah, we all came together in this year. So we came in 19. And then you were mentioning, look at this one. He had already built this. He had already done that. He had already... Hey, the Lord is telling you that for you, it is different. For you, it is different. What you have been going through and thinking that, Lord, enough is enough. All these things is too much on me. The Lord said that my daughter, my son, don't worry. Don't look onto their situations and start comparing yourself. Have faith in me, God. Because whatever that they have done throughout all this time, when I start with you, when I am finished with you and start with you, the years that the cankerworms and the locusts have been eating, those years you shall see flourishment. You shall see. That they, 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 you know, you are already classified as someone who is just useless in America. Useless in America. You are not useless. You are at school. The Lord is preparing you for a higher height. The Lord is preparing you. Say so the rejected stone, the cornerstone, the one that is the rejected stone has now become the cornerstone. So where they are thinking that the hope will be coming from. That's not you that they thought you would be nobody. Today, you are the one that is sending and feeding them. 
and the Lord is taking you higher and higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. Be patient with the Lord. And I'm closing just right here. We are talking about faith that brings obedience to God. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse is 21. Downwards, I'm going to read from 21 to 25. He says, After that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. You see that? The world by wisdom. But it was the wisdom of God for the world not to know God. Read it well. After that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. God did it so. God made it so. He said, it pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. It pleased God by the foolishness. When the word of God came to you, the word of promise came to you, it seems like it is foolish. Oh God, look at me. 90 years man, Abraham, to bring forth not even a child. But you are saying I should count the stars. That I'm going to have that many. Everything around me. That, I mean, what, what, I mean, be, be realistic. I know you are God, but this one is just like. The Lord said, he's the one behind it. He's the one behind it. God, in his wisdom, had made somebody close your case. They have written you off. It is the wisdom of God. They are not even looking on onto your directions anymore when they are calling the family members. Oh, this one, the drunkard, leave him alone. Oh, that poor one, leave him alone. Oh, we are asking you to go and call people. This one is not among people. God did it so. God made it so. Oh, forget about that church goer. Everything about him is church, 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 church. He doesn't want to come to reality. Always tightening the scarf and uh, 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 so-called. She's just entertaining herself as a woman of God. Oh, leave her alone. But you keep coming and hearing the word of God. And the faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. And you are being increased in faith. And as you are being increased in faith, your God is working you. The Lord is working you out. And gradually, from faith, you are being led to glory. From glory to glory. Unto the living God's purpose. Foolish things. God will make them think something that is not right in your sight. So if you don't pay attention, something that your God is doing to promote you, you are just going to stand uh -huh. I thought you were my mother. I thought you were my mother. How can you do this to me? No. Let them continue. Let them continue throwing the dust on you. Let them continue afflicting you. Let them believe whatever that they want to believe. But you continue believing in, on your Jesus. Continue walking with Christ. It's just a matter of time. And we thank God. God himself is time. Mm. So he said that this wisdom for the Jews I'm reading 1 Corinthians 1 22 for the Jews they required a sign they want to see and the Greeks they seek after wisdom uh -huh. they seek after wisdom but we preach crucified so we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks, foolishness. So you can see the, 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 